good afternoon and thank you for joining us for a webinar on Chambers USA. Everything you need to know to optimize your nomination. I am Paola Yuspahabot. I'm president of Top of Mind Public Relations. Uh, we are based in South Florida with an office in Washington, DC. I am a former legal reporter with ALM and my PR firm represents uh, law firms across the US. Every year, one of the most challenging tasks for many marketing departments at law firms is putting together the Chambers nomination. So today we invited the head of the USA Research Development for Chambers and Partners, Kush Jima, to help us understand what we can do better or how we can be more effective to admit in stronger nominations. So law firms and lawyers can be ranked or the rankings um, can be improved. So following Kush's presentation, I will ask him questions that many of you submitted prior to the webinar, but feel free to submit your own questions or new questions uh, during the presentation using the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And I know you will find this presentation very, very helpful. Uh, so enough about the introduction and Kush, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I looking at the attendees, it looks like a, a number of you are people that I know from beforehand, people who are probably fairly familiar with Chambers. So I'll only be presenting for about 10 minutes or so. Um, and then I'll kind of get on to the questions. If there are any amongst you who are kind of completely new to Chambers, um, my email address will be on the presentation. I think it'll be sent out later. And you can always message me on LinkedIn and I'd be happy to kind of um, have a more in-depth discussion with you privately on kind of the the kind of the whole process right from the start, uh, which is slightly daunting. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, just give me one moment. <clears throat> oh, no, it looks like I'm not able to at the moment. Um, it's all right, it's not a problem. I can um, explain this myself. Oh, no, here we go. Excellent. Um, so just to, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Kush Chima. Obviously, I head up the USA research development side of our um, in our office here in New York City. Uh, previously, I was a researcher on the USA and UK guides. Um, I was focused on kind of transactional work and also litigation, particularly in kind of the, the West West Coast. Um, I then became deputy editor for, for Chambers USA. Um, and then last January, uh, I moved over to New York, which was perfect timing. Um, my job here is to kind of uh, be a, an ambassador for you that know Chambers quite well, uh, and also to kind of work with firms that don't know us so well, uh, haven't historically sent in submissions, uh, just to help you kind of navigate the process. Uh, my email address is there if you want to kind of um, uh, take a screenshot and, and message me afterwards. Um, I hope this changes. There we go. So just kind of, it's a very kind of basic level. Chambers, what our rankings involve, uh, it comes as a, as a, our rankings are a product of, of three parts. Uh, the submission document that you guys send in, uh, referee feedback coming from the those listed on the submit, uh, referee spreadsheet that you send in, and also interviews that we do with your firms, do with other firms to try and uh, kind of get a sense of the market uh, at that top level. Um, the, this, last point is always slightly confusing um market feedback we're not kind of uh entirely peer review where you're not going to get in unless your peers say very good things about you this is kind of um uh, additional feedback we will use especially in areas where um kind of we can't get as much client feedback say some of our criminal regulatory sections um and where the legal market is a bit more collegiate where kind of lawyers are serving on panels together or representing a company and representing individuals. The importance of that will increase there, but in sections where it's kind of entirely advisory, uh, kind of tax, environmental law, labor and employment, uh, that kind of fades into its significance. It's more of an idea of us seeing who kind of comes across each other um, in the market. Um, I will go into more details on the submission, the referee feedback and the questions later. 
Um, I thought I would just take the opportunity today as well, just to take a quick look back at kind of everything that's gone over, gone on in the past year. Uh, the big one, obviously, COVID. Um, so there were a few changes that we we initiated to, to kind of deal with uh, all the disruption. We pushed research back by a month. Uh, so the first deadline, I think, was the 13th of July. Research started in August. And we are still, we have a couple of researchers still carrying on things now early in March. Uh, but that should have all, all research will be closed off soon. Um, we were a bit more flexible regarding deadlines. Um, we worked with firms on a more individual basis because we, it was kind of a, um, uh, <laughs> unprecedented events. There was there was no plan really to, to deal with the global pandemic before we started this. Uh, so we were working with a lot of your firms individually to kind of work out deadlines, work out how we would contact clients. Some of the changes, uh, result in kind of fairly significant structural changes in how we research. Um, <clears throat> luckily, prior to COVID, we had uh, used Calendly, which is our new um, kind of call arranging technology where we would send out a link to your clients. Uh, they would just be able to click that, click that link and um, kind of arrange a call directly in a researcher's calendar. Um, as a researcher previously, I knew that 40, 40, 45% of my time was responding to emails to try and uh, get a time in a calendar that suits both of us, uh, one of us being five hours ahead, uh, which is always tough, uh, but Calendly kind of helped alleviate some of the burden that very busy legal departments would have had with, with COVID. Um, it's something that we will kind of use, obviously, very much going forward. Um, we are also allowed in select areas firms to give out researchers' email addresses. Um, along the same lines, we were trying to reduce that kind of back and forth where we might lose interviews. Um, it's something that I think will continue into the next year. Um, it's not always possible across all sections, but we are keen to kind of reduce the burden it takes to kind of get a client to speak to us. Uh, and if they are getting annoyed with kind of the back and forth, it is sometimes easier just to have the lawyer give a link, uh, which will direct uh, direct them to to. to to be able to kind of in, sorry, which will be able to allow the client to book something directly into a, a researcher's calendar. Um, last year, we trialed this a couple of years ago, but we kind of reinforced it this year. Um, in terms of our DNI efforts, we arranged dedicated calls with uh, minority members of staff, up and comers, uh, kind of especially female partners, um, to try and diversify the kind of viewpoints that we get back. We asked something similar. We encourage law firms to provide a uh, referee submission, which is as close, referee spreadsheet even, uh, which is as close to being gender balanced as possible. Um, the way are we, we are targeting this is that if we can uh, diversify the viewpoints we get, speak to a wider range of people in the market, uh, we will diversify the, the nominations we get, the kind of information we get on different partners, and that can only improve our rankings really um, so that's the kind of the, the focus behind that um, finally when the results do come out one thing that you will see is that we would have I think at current standings about 75 new tables coming out um, historically chambers uh, is probably a failing of ours we still operated on the assumption that we have this big kind of brick of a book coming out uh, where time uh, kind of space is a premium we can't include many tables which have any small amount of law firms or lawyers. Uh, now that we're on the web, um, where space is limitless, um, where we have kind of dedicated markets, where we have a niche area of expertise uh, and clients turn to, uh, to lawyers and firms in that kind of niche area of expertise, um, we've introduced tables there. This isn't kind of uh, introducing tables for all and sundry. It's uh, more kind of aligning our uh, state markets to look more similar to how our more developed markets. So um, to give you an example, we introduced a private equity table in Texas, whereas before we would rank them in our nationwide tables. Uh, we introduced the pellet sections in Colorado and Pennsylvania, whereas before that would be nationwide. Uh, what we effectively want to do is to have all of our wide um, look and feel as developed and as mature as our tables perhaps in Illinois and New York and California um, and in areas where we those markets are kind of delineated and kind of face mature we will 
we are more happy now to kind of introduce a table there, even if it has five individuals and, and two firms in it. Um, if it's something that clients want, we will we are happy to kind of uh, to create a table there. Um, it's also allowed us to include kind of more sub tables to include to focus on areas of expertise that are a bit more novel. So I think this year we will have our first SPAC table uh, looking at capital raising lawyers. Um, so for the first time in a while, we're probably slightly ahead of the curve in terms of a, a new market trend that's, uh, that clients are looking for, uh, that we want to be able to, to direct them to the right firms and individuals. Um, next slide. <clears throat> um, just looking ahead, I wanted to, to kind of give you some key dates to look out for. Um, this, I th actually, mistyped there. Early next week, there'll be an email going out, which will, uh, the typical email that goes out to law firms, inviting you to buy a profile um, from which you can deduce who's been ranked and, and where the firm has been ranked. Uh, for some of your law firms, uh, just to, it might appear on my, your My Account section as of today. Uh, we tested out with a few law firms, so uh, it might be appearing. Uh, hopefully that doesn't kind of presage a stampede to the exits, but uh, some of your rankings might be on display on our website. Um, we still hope to launch in time uh, for mid-March, mid-May even, sorry. Um, I think the date that's penciled in is the 20th. It'll be around that date, uh, which is our kind of historic launch date. So we're, we're on time for that. Um, next year, this is 90% certain. Um, we haven't yet had the meetings to confirm, but we think we will follow a similar calendar to what we did last year, uh, where we would have our first deadline in July and research will start in August again. Uh, lasting until the end of January, early February. Um, so that's just a, kind of a, a few tips for the future. Uh, finally, in terms of my slides, I did just want to put this out there, um, a very useful slide listing all our deputy editors, areas of expertise. Uh, if you wanted to get in contact with any of them for some technical queries on kind of uh, particular practice area questions, uh, feel free to, to get in touch. They're always happy to speak. Uh, along the bottom line, there is also a list of our commercial team contacts. Uh, if you have any questions on the commercial end, uh, feel free to direct them to there. Um, I'll leave that up for a second in case you want to screenshot it. Uh, but that's all of my slides, so I will just uh, kind of turn it over to you for questions. Great. Thanks, Kash. Um, it was a very great presentation. Um, let me start with some of the questions that we have received so far. So. What is the most important part of the submission, which is, you know, has multiple sections? Hmm. So the most important for us uh, is the work. Um, it's kind of the, the foundation of your argument to be included, to kind of go up. Um, what Chambers wants to do is look at the firms and individuals that can regularly and repeatedly handle the kind of the, the bet the company, the bet the individual's liberty litigation matters the most sophisticated and complex regulatory or transactional matters. Uh, and the way that we see that is through the, the submission itself, through the work highlights itself. Um, I should note also, it's fine to include any combination of uh, confidential or publishable work matters. Um, the submission, you can edit the template, but all we want is kind of 20 examples of your ability to handle those kinds of matters. Um, the way I see it, that should kind of be the, the foundation of of what you're putting together, anything that you refer to in your kind of what is the team best known for, um, we look to have evidence to back that up throughout the submission. So if you're telling us that, um, so to use an obvious example, if Kirkland are telling us we are the the private ex, we are the top rated private equity uh, practice because we have a, the most transactions, the highest value transactions, and we look through the submission, see evidence of twenty work highlights where the handling multi billion dollar matters kind of sophisticated carve-outs, minority transactions, uh, working for a kind of diverse client base of the leading private equity firms, uh, that's kind of the perfect submission for us. So the work is, is, is definitely the, the kind of the, the foundation stone of the, of the submission. Uh, how detailed should the highlighted matters be? Because you only have, you know, one page and, you know, sometimes we really want to go in depth to show how complex the matter was yeah but limited space yeah um so uh, some people have probably heard me say this multiple times before but i think of a, a good work highlights as a kind of a think of a new york Times new york times article 
you have the kind of the lead, which is about two, three sentences. We advised uh, no, Bain Capital on their $5 billion transaction to acquire a different company uh, from another firm. Um, that's it, that's your first sentence. And then after that, you can go into slightly more depth um, in concerning kind of what was important. Was it a cross-border deal? Did it involve a kind of significant corporate restructuring? Uh, did COVID play a, play a kind of a part in delaying the transaction? Um, what we don't want effectively is kind of a, a long kind of list of this is why it's important because this partner worked on it, this partner worked on it. What I've seen is these kind of big blocks and text. And while when we're sitting down afterwards to review it, it's useful to, it's useful to sorry, while when, when we're sitting down to review it afterwards, we can always kind of look at uh, links and do a bit more further reading around the matter. Uh, particularly when we're involved in interviews with, with partners, if we wanted to ask them about a specific matter, uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to, to find when you're kind of looking at a big block of text. Um, so having a kind of a short, shorter, punchier bit at the start, a bit more detail afterwards. And if you wanted to send in more detail, you can always do so to send to the deputy editor, to the researcher. Uh, if there have been significant updates in the interim, then you can do that as well. Um, this doesn't apply to, to all the sections. It's probably easiest on the transaction sections. Uh, say kind of our appellate rankings where you've had a, an underlying case, a kind of a reversal on appeal, then a further appeal, then sent a petition to the Supreme Court. It's going to be a bit chunkier. Uh, that's fine. We, we're understanding there. The, the kind of guiding principle should just be kind of um, conciseness, but with enough of a flavor as to why this matter is important. I love uh, your, the, what you say, the comparison to a newspaper article where you have the lead, you know, you have the body and then you have kind of the conclusion. So does it make a difference if we provide links to new news articles where, you know, some of the firm victories were featured or some of the lawyers appeared, you know, as thought leaders, does that play any uh, role? It's useful uh, in providing kind of the, the color commentary on a, on a, section on a, on a sorry a practice a practice group the the predominant kind of decisions behind a ranking will be the feedback and the the evidence of the work itself um but for kind of for the the recognized industry awards the alm you know, the litigator of the year feel free to include that in a in a submission document kind of you know the law 360 have a list of the 10 deals to watch something like that fine fine to include we will read it we will look at it it's something we look at before research as well just to see if there's kind of people that we might be missing out that we uh that we haven't looked at in the past um i would caution against kind of a big long list of links if you're uh to go back to my private equity example if you're advising on a big multinational tran uh, multinational transaction and you include a link to the the ft the new york times the washington post kind of the the economist all effectively detailed in the same thing is not as useful. Uh, be a bit selective, but we will we will read it and we do take it into consideration. But uh, the the work and the commentary is still the the main facets of our decision making. Okay. Um, important question: Which attorneys should we include in our submissions? Which attorney should we include? This is always a tough one because uh, yeah, it's tough to kind of let an attorney know that maybe you're not going to emphasize their their uh, their bid this year. I would focus on about four or five attorneys typically um, because we're looking at feedback as well as the work highlights and both are limited to kind of 20 in, in both. Um, it can be a bit harder if you're kind of spreading it across, multi, spreading kind of 20 work highlights across 10 uh, attorneys or 20 referees across 10 uh, attorneys. Some of them are going to be group comments. Some of them are going to be first chair trial lawyers, second chair trial lawyers, and we'll get that information from the submission uh, where we, they can have kind of kind of multiple lead partners. Uh, but focusing on a few is better than kind of putting everyone forward at once. Um, just because we can build a slightly more kind of detailed picture of a particular attorney, um, a particular practice area, uh, if we have a few few comments and a few work highlights for each individual one, um, it's it's going to be tough on your end to kind of go back to your partners and say, perhaps not this year. Um, I think in kind of thinking two three years in advance, we will move probably move to a model where you can provide five attorneys and five work highlights per 
lawyer up to about 10 lawyers or something if we improve our kind of tech as we go on uh, but for now kind of as chambers as it stands it would just be slightly more limited uh, just a bit more concise perfect um who make the best referees so when it's time to select mm. the referees um so those that have the time to speak with us and also have kind of a relatively decent grasp of of what makes the lawyer kind of good so um if you're working for the kind of fortune 500 i would perhaps caution against referring the the clo the gc the ceo uh, or the cfo um because these people are often kind of a lot more stretched for time they might have a fleeting engagement with the the lead partner they'll meet them for the first time they'll have a couple of catch-up meetings and they'll sign off on the bill at the end after hopefully everything's resolved fine um in my experience and most of the researchers experiences the people who speak to the people who we find most useful are someone slightly further down the hierarchy uh, kind of um, you know, senior litigation counsel senior corporate counsel uh, kind of even legal operations um, staff uh, because they have more of a day-to-day -day engagement and they also see the team across the hierarchy so they're look, working with the lead lawyer they know how involved the lead lawyer he or she is um, but they're also working with the, the associates the junior partners uh, they're probably more likely to reach out to other practice groups in uh, um, as part of the, the the kind of the team that's servicing them so we get more feedback and more in-depth feedback or across more people uh, which is always the most useful for us and uh, can you talk about some of the questions that researchers ask to the referees yeah so it's very generic uh, at the start because we want to determine how much the client is willing to divulge which is a lot more important than some of our regulatory and criminal sections so we will start by kind of giving them a disclaimer that this is completely confidential the law firm won't know that we've spoken to you um secondly we'll go ask them kind of very gener generally kind of how long have we been working with the firm um how did that relationship come about uh and then what kind of work has the firm done for you in the last 12 18 months or so um that question we won't refer to any prior knowledge we might have through the submission. Um, we will allow them to kind of give as much detail or, or as little as they want. We know this firm uh, clients are sometimes OK with having their work highlights written up, but they don't want to talk about them. Uh, so we don't want to kind of push them too much on that. Um, and after that, we will go directly into kind of who did you work with um, that was particularly impressive, both the, the kind of the relationship partner, the one who's leading the engagement and anyone at the kind of lower level there. Um, when you send in your referee submissions, you will list the firms typically list their lead partner that you want us to ask about. Um, at, on the first instance, we won't ask about them. We will ask generally, who did you work with? Who did you find oppressive? If they mention that partner, fine. If they don't, then we will go loop back at the end. And, you know, the law firm told me to ask about this person. What were your thoughts there? Um, it's just a way for us to kind of get feedback uh, across the team. Um, we'll ask them also kind of what didn't go so well, were there any constructive criticisms. Uh, we'll ask about value for money, which turned up very interesting results this year, um, obviously. Uh, and then very finally, we will ask about uh, any other law firms that they might have used um, across the US, globally, across any practice area, just to kind of milk them from a bit more feedback if they have it. And we will repeat that for, for every referral they have, um, every law firm, every practice group. Um, so that sometimes involves more kind of arranging a half hour call instead of our usual 10, 15, which is probably another reason to kind of avoid listing the, the GCs, the CLOs, because if we are, say, for instance, uh, next year, if there is a big antitrust investigation of Facebook, they will be lose, using about six, seven different firms. If we are speaking to the chief legal officer there, uh, we'll only have about five minutes to speak to every one of the referrals. Uh, so if you kind of bring it down to a lower level, um, then they have a bit more time to speak to us about your about your group. Got it. Um, one other question is, uh, do you recommend giving referees the heads up that a Chambers researcher will be uh, contacting them? And how do we influence the referee interaction with Chambers, right? Like returning the call, making sure that they take the time and they're in a quiet place, you know, to talk. Mm. 
I would definitely give them a heads up. Um, you can see from our research schedule when the, um, so typically research will begin about, so you will have a, a deadline for the submissions around the 17th, 18th of the month. The next month, the research should begin. And the first thing we do when we start research after we've kind of gone through the admin is blast out our emails to clients. Uh, so you can kind of usually, this year it was slightly different because of COVID, we had to delay some sections because some overran. But typically we will start the, the month after the deadline. So you can give uh, clients a heads up, say, you know, around this time, someone might be getting in contact. Also feel free to get in touch with the researcher themselves and say, you know, when are you sending out your emails? When are you sending out your reminders? Um, and use that as an opportunity just to kind of gently nudge the clients. Um, most clients know who we are by now, um, but there have been a few instances I was researching this year where a couple of firms didn't kind of forewarn their clients, and it does look slightly uh, kind of dodgy. You know, this law, this person I don't know is emailing me about this kind of slightly hairy matter I had. And the law firm that I use, why should I speak to them? Is this a kind of a phishing attempt? Um, so if they have a bit of forewarning, it's, it's really useful. Um, so yeah, in terms of influencing the, the, the engagement, uh, if clients haven't heard from us, we really want to know. Um, so feel free to kind of pass that back to the researcher, pass it to the deputy editor. Um, in those instances, typically, if our emails aren't getting through, um, we can from now on probably give you our calendar links and you can pass them on to clients yourselves or um, we'll just cold call them, leave a message, uh, leave our email address and then they can get back in touch with us at their convenience. How can the law firms obtain information about the feedback researchers received from the referees and ranking decisions? So the editorial team kind of does give kind of slightly more informal advice, um, kind of what our findings were. We limit it to around six or seven queries. Uh, if we have kind of, you know, 20 questions about these individuals and these rankings, why didn't we get here? What did we get? It kind of takes up a lot of time because it's having done these queries, it takes about an hour, two hours to kind of go through each one to kind of answer six, seven queries. Um, so if you have kind of burning questions about something, the 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 page that I had on earlier, feel free to direct those questions. Either kind of agglomerate all your questions on our, our rankings, pick five, six, seven, uh, and send them to a deputy editor. Or if you only have one or two, send it to the deputy editor who uh, the, the practice area kind of belongs to. Um, for slightly more in-depth questions, it's our, I would get in touch with our commercial team because we provide insight reports, which basically lists kind of anonymized client feedback uh, and go into more details than the editorial team would uh, in terms of the, the reasoning behind the ranking decision. Uh, but for kind of the slightly less in-depth advice, uh, kind of slightly more general, maybe questions about kind of client feedback or negative client feedback, if it's something like that, we're happy to divulge that information uh, as long as it's not kind of, you know, these are 20 questions, uh, <laughs> answer them now. Um, so, yeah. So um, somebody's asking, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, but so can you uh, explain the process of, you know, finding out who is the researcher assigned to these, these specific law firms and um, how can we provide additional information after, you know, what we already said in the form plus, you know, your conversation with the referee, um, mm -hmm. can we provide additional information that maybe wasn't available earlier? Yeah, so their contact details are available on our research schedule. Um, so it's just research.chambersandpartners.com. Um, oh no, that's wrong. So if you go to the Chambers website and it's on the top right, there's a link that just says research schedule. Um, you can use the, the, the scroll down menus on the left-hand side to kind of narrow it down to uh, the USA guide, your jurisdiction, the practice area that you're looking for. Uh, and on the screen it will have the the research section when it's going to be researched and when the deadline is uh, when that section is currently going through research you can click on it and you'll have the details of the researcher there uh, their their phone number and their their email address so feel free to kind of ping them a message um, if you can't get through sometimes uh, i remember kind of in some of our busiest sections you're on emails all day with clients and you're prioritizing that ahead of kind of reaching out to law firms um, you can just get in touch with the deputy editor 
uh, and they can kind of answer the same questions as well. Okay, do you grant deadline extensions? So the simple answer is no, but it's kind of slightly more complex. Uh, we don't want to kind of uh, provide an extension for one law firm, but we might not do it for another. It's kind of, it opens us up to allegations of bias that we don't want to kind of get, get uh, kind of get too far into the mire with. Um, we do, however, don't have any penalties for, um, we don't have any penalties for submitting late, uh, so long as it comes within the research section, uh, research period. So if uh, a section is being researched in August and you send it in the first, second of August, it effectively makes no difference. Uh, the issue can be sometimes if we get the client uh, spreadsheet in quite late, if we get it in you know, two weeks into a, a month long section, uh, we're not always able to reach out to all of them. Um, we will try as, as hard as we can. To, we want to speak to everyone that we possibly can. But if the researcher has kind of a month of full calls all afternoon, um, it can be hard to kind of reach out to another 20. So if you have instances where you feel you might uh, be sending in something late, um, I would always prioritize the referee spreadsheet, get that in as soon as you can, uh, just so that they have the biggest window possible to kind of speak with us. And then if you need to send in the submission kind of a week late, then that's fine. There's no penalty there. The only time where we wouldn't accept it is if a research section has already closed um, and we kind of moving on to something else, then we won't accept a submission or a referee's feedback. Um, so somebody's asking, when will the embargo rankings be released to firms? Mm, it's We're working on it now. We don't have a fixed date in mind. It's usually early May. Um, it's something that's kind of under discussion at the minute, just because uh, we've basically cut a month off of our uh, our usual kind of operating window for the US. Uh, so just kind of fitting everything in is a bit tough at the moment, uh, but we should have more information on that coming out soon. Okay. Um, last year, some researchers allowed us to give their email to a ref references so the references could contact them directly. Will that be allowed this year again? Um, it's likely it's last year it was kind of more select. Um, so for instance, kind of our New York litigation section, there are upwards of 10,000 referees and that's researched over three months. And that's as well as speaking to about 50 law firms. So sometimes we find it tough to kind of, um, to reach out to all those law firms and let them all know that they can give that out. Sometimes the research is not gonna have enough time uh, as it stands, but it's something that we did this year. It worked quite well. We'll expand it next year. We're deciding now whether to kind of make it, uh, to roll it out across each section of our research. Um, but it's something that will continue on a kind of an expanded basis this year. We're just honing down on kind of how to, how to operate it. Got it. Um, when will response rates for referees be available? Oh yeah, it will come up on, it's something we're working on on our tech team. It was supposed to be available for last year, but then obviously our IT was working on a lot of other things. Um, but we are working on at the moment, having that information available on the My Account section. So after you've uh, uploaded your spreadsheet, um, what we want to have available is a, a tool where you can just sign in, look at the spreadsheet and see kind of who's, uh, see how many have responded rather than who's responded. Um, I don't think it will be available for the next iteration of USA Research, um, but it is something that's, that's coming. Great. Um, so, you know, we're talking about how to uh, work with the referees and get all this, you know, great feedback from, from you know, our, 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 our clients, but then somebody here is asking me, you know, certain partners, so we were talking about all that, but certain partners and their clients have grown a bit frustrated with regard to uh, references or referees not being contacted. Yeah, so in those, what we're trying to do, this is where kind of letting law firms give out the uh, the email addresses has, has really come from. There have been instances where emails haven't gone out and we've been kind of a bit lax in kind of reaching out. So we're trying to kind of reduce those steps and that's where we're gonna allow you to kind of give those details out. In any instance where you feel, where you've heard that a client hasn't heard back from us, um, go straight to a researcher, go straight to a deputy editor. That, as a researcher and kind of when I instruct researchers who oversee my sections, that's the kind of the first thing you look at for your emails in the morning, you know, 
if this law firm has told us, you know, actually this person's got back to us, they were expecting to hear from us, but they haven't. Um, the first thing you do that morning is kind of sign into your Outlook, send them a message, check back with the law firm to get them to, or kind of, or call them up, um, leave a voicemail um, and have them get back in touch with you. Got it. Um, so with the change last year in individual attorney bios, not duplicative text from website, et cetera. What exactly is Chambers looking for to have attorneys ranked individually? Oh, that we got rid of the, the biography section in the spread in the submission document just for ease. What we found typically was that um, a lot of law firms were just kind of copying the first paragraph of the web bio back into the submission and kind of to reduce the burden of that must be kind of searching and copying and putting in and then going to the next one. You can just put the link in. If you don't want to do that, what I would recommend is if you want to do that for kind of brevity's sake, maybe include a couple of lines as to what their, their practice areas really specializes in. If you have any notes that you want to give us, you know, what have we not seen about this practitioner in the past that we should be looking at? Um, it was just a, an effort to kind of simplify um, to, to simplify the submission process, just that you don't have to kind of type in a, a biography that's already available online. Uh, and if you just want to add a few bullet points to say, you know, we think this practitioner should be ranked because they handle this number of deals, they handle this litigation matter, um, historically they've done this, then that, that's fine as well. Got it. Um, will, will there be any changes to the submission template for the next research cycle? It's unlikely. Um, I don't think so at the minute. The idea is to kind of simplify it as much as possible. What, Again, this is kind of thinking five years in the future. Um, what we want to be moving towards is uh, us being able to kind of scrape your website for the kind of the, the details that you put on a significant recent uh, engagement for a client, a big transaction, uh, a big dispute that's just settled um, rather than you having to fill it in. And then you can send in a submission for any particular information that you want to provide us. Um, I, I get that the burden of chambers is uh, kind of, it's big and it was only increasing for about five years. Hopefully by having a slightly more simplified submission, we kind of reduce that burden. If we can have a submission where you only need to provide us kind of top up information uh, and you have the tech available to see response rates that kind of lowers that burden further. We're trying to become as inobtrusive as we possibly can, but <laughs> given how many kind of processes now Byzantine it's got over the last few years it's it's taking a while just to wind back don't worry um so purely as an estimate what percentage of references respond via email versus those who engage in a phone conversation with a researcher last year is a bit of an anomaly because we sent out a lot more questionnaires um just because we didn't want to kind of uh if they didn't respond to our first email with the calendar invite, we would send them a second one with a questionnaire. Um, and that kind of artificially inflated it. When I was a researcher, the majority were calls. Um, it also depends on the, on the researcher's schedule. If they're based in London, they're covering kind of Hawaii or Alaska, sometimes California, Oregon, uh, Washington. Uh, we will kind of sway towards questionnaires. Um, those with multiple referrals will Kind of if you're referred by more than two practice areas or, or two firms, 67 or probably 70, 80 percent of those will come with a phone call. Uh, we only want a questionnaire response from them if they absolutely can't um, have a, a phone call with us. For those with singular kind of referrals, it's more about 40 percent questionnaires and about 60 percent um, phone uh, 40 percent questionnaires, 60 percent phone calls but that will differ slightly based on kind of, um, so our litigation sections are always, the people are very busy, especially kind of in the midst of a, or in the midst of a big kind of corporate M&A or private equity transaction. Clients are typically more liable to, to send us a questionnaire so they don't have to block off 15 minutes for a phone call when they can do it right. there and then. But, um, awesome. but yeah, it differs. Okay. Um, is there a limit to how many submissions a referee can be used for? No, um, I have seen 26 for one, and I felt very sorry for that person. They did speak to us every year, um, which is unimaginable. Um, 
there isn't an upper limit. The for most sections, the ones you, you typically see is the highest is about five or six. Um, which personally I think is probably a bit too much for one person anyway. It's uh, most of them have about most of them have one. Um, on average, if they're multiple referrals, they have about two or three. Um, but when they do have a higher amount of referrals, we will still speak to them. We will send them a very flattering email saying, can we block off 20 minutes of your time? Um, and they do typically respond to us, which is, which is great. Uh, but yeah, I've seen kind of absurdly high ones in the past. So somebody is saying, you know, um, do they have to speak with them on the phone? Because um, many of them, many of the referees would rather send an email, you know, like explain via email. So do they have to get on a phone call? No, no, it's it's completely up to them. Um, our emails will always have the kind of a disclaimer at the bottom. If you don't want to have a phone call, you can uh, please let me know and I'll send you a questionnaire. If I send them a questionnaire, I always say kind of, alternatively you can use this link to book a phone call um it, it's up to them we don't want to kind of pester them and kind of take up too much time of their day perfect uh what type of comparative and analytics do you use to determine bands it's kind of qualitative based on the feedback and the kind of the, the work so this is sophistication of a, a litigation matter that a, a white collar boutique that handles work for represent uh, individuals um, you know, let's say a boutique in California that works for execs of uh, PG&E following the, the kind of the wildfires. If they're able to do that to a high degree, that's kind of different, kind of, you know, a Latham or a Gibson Dunn representing the firm. Um, we look at it slightly compared to kind of the, the, the capabilities, the market they operate in, but largely based on uh, client feedback and, and, and the work itself. Um, on our transactional sections, we will take a look at kind of merger market, prequin, uh, Thomson Reuters, the kind of um, the reports that come out based on deal volume and kind of the aggregate deal value. If it looks like there is a firm that uh, I use it personally, I oversee our appellate sections. If someone's had more than two or three Supreme Court arguments in the last term, if we see people there that we're not looking at or look kind of very egregiously low down, uh, we will kind of send that on to research. Being, can you? direct a bit more of your research this way is that something that's kind of uh, we're overlooking um most of our rankings are still coming from the submission and the feedback but we use that as kind of again kind of color commentary to to direct our our attention where it needs to be directed okay thanks um how long will chambers wait before contacting a referee who has been put forward for multiple submissions um, so typically, so this might preempt a, a further question about cross-referencing. When you send in a referee, we will match them based on their email address. Uh, typically, we're sending their work email addresses. So if someone is, um, if a, a litigation counsel at, at Facebook is sent in as a referee for a litigation section in Georgia and a litigation section in uh, Illinois, um, our system will automatically match them. And when we get to the interview, we will uh, see all their, their referrals on, on one screen. Um, so we will send them the email the first time out. Um, we have these two referrals for you. Can you speak with us? If they don't respond to us, then we typically, we will send a reminder email. Um, if they're then referred again, kind of later in the year for another section, uh, we typically we wait about three months before getting back in contact if we've already sent them an email, sent them a reminder. Um, we will kind of send them another email, send them another reminder for this new thing. Um, and then if they get in touch with us, then we will cover all three referrals in, in one interview. Um, so yeah, we will we'll wait. They'll get contacted at the start of the month, the, the reminder, and then three months we'll wait. And then if they get referred again, we'll, we'll, we'll contact them again and send them a reminder. Excellent, good to know. Um, is there a place where we can sign up to receive updates about publication dates, the schedule being posted, updates to scheduling, et cetera, versus being taken by surprise? Yeah, um, the, yeah. so you can sign up. Um, if you send me an email first, I can get you signed up with our um, 
it, it goes through our, our web team, basically. Um, we just kind of input you in as a, as a research marketing contact, and then you'll get the information on, on launch dates and, and the research schedule. Um, get in touch with me, um, and I will send you on to the right person, and we can kind of get you signed up for the right place, right things. And we are going to share your information again at the end, uh, but also when we send out um, the post, uh, an e-blast for, you know, after this, um, uh, webinar so everybody will have your direct email phone so you know um, excellent so last year you started asking for diversity uh, headcounts did you get a good response rate uh, curious to see how that information unfolds in the upcoming USA 2021 guide mm. yeah so I think there's an aspect of us going back to the drawing board slightly there because I don't think we were very clear enough on kind of what kind of information we were looking for. Some law firms were sending us kind of firm-wide statistics, some office statistics, some particular, you know, if you're if you have multiple offices in California, they'll send us California statistics. Um, we don't have kind of yeah, it's been separate for each firm. It was quite useful because it allows us to look at, you know, if we have a submission that comes in from a law firm which tells us that 40% of their litigation practice is female we've ranked six guys there's something slightly off with our rankings there and we can kind of again direct our attention to, to you know who are we missing out uh why have we looked over these people historically um so it's quite useful there it's not used for ranking purposes that that kind of information just to preempt any further questions on this um we won't kind of you know look at a kirkland sub versus a, a latham Watkins sub and say you know this practice is more female litigators this practice is more female corporate uh, we should kind of move them up and down based purely on that. Where it comes into play is if clients come back to us, and they do, um, saying that we wanted a more diverse team. Um, if we have kind of clients telling us that, kind of multiple clients telling us that, that's what can impact ranking when they say, you know, I wanted more female members of the of the, the team that's serving me and more minority members of the team that's service me, serving me. And it means I'm more likely to send work elsewhere in the future. Um, which which does happen kind of fairly regularly um and that will lead to kind of a, kind of a, that will lead us to see the the prospect for ranking more negatively uh but the the statistics themselves aren't used for ranking purposes awesome uh, i think you shared earlier the day in may the usa 2021 guide will launch can you please share that date again yeah it's penciled in for the 20th of may um, it can be a couple of days before, or a couple of days afterwards. Um, it's kind of 85% certain to be the 20th. We're just kind of finalizing everything, uh, finalizing the rankings, finalizing all the editorial and all the stuff that goes into kind of getting the, the book, at the, the rankings up there, but it should be the 20th. Good. Uh, recently, the UK template was updated for this section of ranked individuals. Will that change be incorporated into US? We'll see. So the, the good thing about how our research is structured is that our UK US researchers will then move on to the UK equivalent of their sections um, after they finish research for the US. Um, so we can see how things play out if it works out well, um, especially amongst the kind of the US law firms in London then we will roll it out to the to the US for the next in, uh, next edition. Uh, this period kind of between now and the schedule going out um, is where we kind of take a quick look at what's working well on the UK guide and what we can incorporate to the US. So we're not entirely sure it's likely um, because they're probably did the same thing kind of seeing what worked on the US guide and kind of making changes based on that. Um, so it's likely, but we'll have to, to see how it works first. Sure, play by ear. Yeah. Um, what percentage of referee feedback is considered good enough so an attorney will move up in the ranking? So we're very interested in moving up now. <laughs> yeah, um, it's relative. This year it's less obviously because, and it's relative to the section as well. So in a, a white collar criminal section, there have been instances I've, I've just finished ranking one in California, where we've not heard back from any clients, but we can see from the work and we can see through kind of historical feedback and kind of peers who see them working on significant matters on, on panels and stuff. Um, I've, I've moved them up. 
typically kind of mm, it's a difficult question because we can have kind of two or three well four or five comments saying that you know this 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 attorney worked very well in the second chair capacity but most of my interaction was with the lead partner uh which is probably not as kind of useful for considering movers as, as kind of two or three people's kind of really singing the praises uh saying that you know they did this well they handled the other side very well uh, kind of um so <laughs> it's hard to kind of put a, a hard and fast um kind of number on it it depends on the section but what we effectively want is kind of at least two or three comments saying that detailed comments on, on on why they did something particularly well so do you recommend um you know sometimes we keep the same referees from the previous year uh, and let's say somebody was ranked you know band four but we want to get to band three do do you recommend like maybe changing referees and get someone other people who may be more enthusiastic <laughs> <laughs> um the, the the repeat referees typically know what we're doing as well and they know what we're asking for so it can actually be better sometimes in the second year uh, the referees i would encourage you to have include people who have recent experience um so that's the kind of the the the, the main cutoff from, for referees um yeah hmm. So the, it's kind of think you have not. how we rank, how we move up in the ranking you know yeah so i would include people who kind of have recent experience uh first and foremost it's fine to include them multiple years it's often kind of a lawyer's kept on retainer uh particularly for our litigation sessions especially this year given kind of barely any trials went ahead the people we spoke to this year will be the people we speak to next year and they will give us an update on you know this is how they handled it during covid this is how they got marshaled the resources to kind of get it ready for my updated trial date. Um, so it, it's fine to, to include them year on year. In terms of moving up, we'll look at that kind of, we'll probably ask more detailed conversation, uh, detailed questions based on, on the most recent updates. Um, and if there's kind of an upward trajectory there, then that's, um, then that's kind of more conducive to move up. I know um, the private equity section that I oversee, um, obviously, you're working with a lot of repeat players, uh, and you, we, I have, I do look at kind of what a certain client said this year, what they said two years ago, uh, and if they're kind of working, they had similar comment, but kind of more, in, especially with kind of up and comers, if they're saying, you know, this person was a decent second kind of second chair for for this transaction, and now they're saying, you know, I turn the majority of my work over to to, to him or her, uh, then that's more conducive to move up as well. Got it. So, okay, we're running out of time. I have uh, a few more questions. Uh, to the three parts of the ranking process, submission, client feedback, and market research, have equal weight in the rankings decision, or is there one piece that weighs more, such as the client feedback? So typically in our sections, the client feedback takes the, takes the, kind of the majority of it. We use the submission to kind of back up the client assertions as well that you know we turn to this this law firm for our most sophisticated matters um what we're looking for most of all is, is the client feedback that's not always possible as i said kind of in criminal sessions uh where the the value of the submission will increase because that's our only way of telling that you handle these kind of very significant matters um and the value of peer feedback kind of pay fail kind of fades into insignificance for those advisory sections I mentioned earlier, where, you know, one tax lawyer isn't going to have a very good idea as to what this other tax lawyer is doing for their clients and where they are in the market, because it's kind of a very client to law firm relationship. Um, in private equity, where a client works with multiple law firms and law firms will see multiple other law firms on, on deals or on kind of pitching and stuff um then the value of that will will increase slightly but in all cases the majority of our of our decision making is based on on client feedback excellent um does the size of a practice group weigh in on whether they are recognized by chambers as a practice not particularly um you can see with the amount of boutiques and stuff that we we have ranked that you know if you know, kind of a Wilkinson Walsh in, in DC, which I think is only Beth Wilkinson and, um, I don't know, the, 
I think there's three name partners. Uh, they, the law firm is ranked quite highly in our DC commercial litigation sections um, because that, that is the practice. Um, it doesn't matter to us if you don't have kind of 50 lawyers working, us, working on the background. Um, if law clients are telling us that we turn to your practice group for these significant matters, um, even despite the kind of the, the limited size of the team, if you don't have the resources of a, of a Latham or a Kirkland, then we will we will rank the practice. Understood. How, can you also elaborate on the three month rule? Yeah. Um, so before we had this kind of complex formulation of kind of six months, uh, but now it's kind of three months. So we will contact your client at the start of the research section, send them a reminder. If they don't respond to the reminder and they're referred again later down the line, we will hold off on contacting them for three months. And then when they become kind of eligible for contacting again, we will kind of send them an email, uh, ask them to cover all referrals. Um, that effectively gives us two opportunities in the research section to, to send an email. Before it was six months, we could only effectively email them once, maybe twice, right at the start, right at the end. Uh, but now it's kind of three months in any case. Excellent. Um, so we're out of time and out of questions. So that's good. Except for Barbara, um, you're asking if we can get the team slide again. So what we can do is we can email you all um, the slides. So you can uh, have that, save that. But we're also going to include it in the uh, post event e blast that we're going to be sending out um, in, the, in the coming days. So, uh, Kosha, thanks so much for your great presentation your great answers. And uh, I'm sure that after this, all, all, all our lawyers are going to be ranked or are going to move <laughs> up in the ranking. Um, so like I said, uh, in the coming days, we will send out a post event e-blast with a link to the uh, pre-recorded video. So you can listen to, you know, Kush answers all over again. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for, for us. Kush, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Um, have a good evening, everyone. And thanks to the attendees for watching. See you next time.